Hey, this is the Amateur Logician. I really do hope you are doing well. Now, if you are at all interested in scholastic traditional logic or scholastic philosophy in general, then you'll definitely like this very handy and affordable reference. It's Dictionary of Scholastic Philosophy by Bernard Wollner. Now, my apologies if I mispronounce his name, but regardless, I've utilized this reference myself. It deals with many of the topics I cover on my YouTube channel and at my website, amateurlogician.com. It's an older book, to be sure, but it's still very useful and it's affordable. Now, in my mind, good philosophy really is an exploration of the inner depths of reality, and this book can help us. Philosophy tries to go beyond ordinary investigations of the specialized sciences. It often tries to get at the root of things concerning what it means to exist at all, what knowledge exactly is, and much else besides. Philosophy is not, and should not be, some intellectual chess game. Engaging in philosophy, in my mind, should be a spiritual and intellectual quest. And as an amateur or layman, my goal really is to seek what's true, good, and beautiful. And this book helps. A sense of wonder, I believe, is required for learning, contemplating, and appreciating things. So let's explore this book. And again, it's readable, it's concise, and I think you will enjoy it. So let me just turn this over and read some of the back. It tells us that Everyone concerned with philosophy, the college undergraduate just becoming initiated into the fascinating realm of metaphysical inquiry, the interested adult anxious to grapple with questions of fundamental importance, or the busy teacher seeking to whet his student's appetite for truth, all will find this concise reference book of the terms most commonly used by scholastic philosophers of remarkable value. Um, arranged in dictionary form, this work contains over 1,600 entries and sub-entries of scholastic terms and phrases and includes, in addition, over 30 charts and diagrams providing salient information on such topics as the divisions of act and potency, sound familiar, the kinds of appetites, the categories of being, sound familiar, the types of law and their relations one to the other, the powers of man, and many others. So let's open this book up and take a look at the table of contents and some of the content is pretty cool, even if you're just interested in traditional logic, honestly. And I'll show you that in a minute or two. So this was originally published in 1956, so it is an old book. But again, still good. Who cares about the age? Table of contents, the preface, the acknowledgement, di diagrams and charts. So there you'll find a listing of them and the page numbers. And really, page one starts the dictionary. Um, and it's in alphabetical order, as you should suspect. Here we have the diagram and charts, divisions of act and potency. You have beatitude. You have categories of being, divisions of efficient cause. You have things like divisions of end, of evil, of uh, form. You have senses of intellect. You have types of laws and their relations, some uses of material cause and of matter, and so on and so forth. So really cool. Um, here's a guide to the entries. So... Entries have been made in alphabetical order, as you should suspect. It is a dictionary. Um, so um, there's your like little intro. And it starts with, of course, the letter A. And notice, right off the bat, A, the symbol for a universal affirmative proposition. There's some good logic there, some logic that we should all know and study. So you have terms like abstract, abstracted, um, uh, abstraction, and so forth. So let's just go uh, through this. Here we have the divisions of act and potency, which I talked about um, previously, in fact. Um, I didn't follow this exactly. I followed more Edward Fazer, to be honest, but this is definitely uh, analogous or parallel to what I did and what Fazer does and so forth. So if we just keep on going through this, um, look here, for example, here's another good logic term, axiom, self-evident primary truth. And there's a reference to, actually, Aristotle there. Pretty cool. So we'll continue looking through this book. Um, here we have categories of being, which is pretty cool. Substance, we have accidents, quantity, quality, relation. We have action and passion and place and time and posture and habit. All that good stuff that you would find in a traditional logic book um, and even in you know, metaphysics and so forth. Um, there's concept, the intellect's representation in itself of the form or essence of a thing, the intellectual likeness of a thing or form, the result of apprehension of an object, 
express intelligible species, internal word, mental term, etc. So, pretty cool. Um, so, just keep on flipping through this. Um, so, let me see if I can find something on inference or something like that. That's one thing I want to try to get to. Um, so here's inference, um, the act of the mind moving from the content of one or more judgments to a new judgment connected with the prior one or ones, the judgment or proposition so derived. We have immediate inference, that's an act of the mind deriving from one judgment another connected judgment without the aid of any additional term or judgment. And that's in contrast to immediate inference, by the way, also known as uh, reasoning. So a lot of terms from uh, logic in this. So let's continue. Um, so here's something cool. Some uses of material cause and of matter. Um, oh, here's something really, really good in logic. Divisions of propositions. So here's something we should know. Affirmative versus negative propositions, true or false, certain or probable. We have universal uh, propositions. We have singular, indefinite, simple, composite. We have complex, we have modal. Look at that, necessary, contingent, possible, impossible. We have various types of opposition, like contrary, subcontrary, contradictory, subaltern. We have converses and inverses, all that good stuff. Analytical or analytic a priori, synthetic a posteriori. You have um, axioms and postulates and theorems and definitions and premises and principles and, and so forth. It's all important in argumentation. Um, and um, here's another really cool thing for logic. Forms of reasoning, proof and refutation, the quality of the proof, form or structure of proof, method. So a lot of cool things to study in this text. Um, and it's just a reference and, you know, you need a good logic book to really get in depth to these, in depth with these things. But um, again, I really like this um, Dictionary of Scholastic Philosophy. And below you will see a link if you so desire to purchase it. That is an affiliate link, so I will earn a small commission on it. And I would appreciate that. But anyways, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, let me know. Give it a like. Subscribe to this YouTube channel if you haven't already. And if you haven't, please check out my website, amateurlogician.com. Thanks and be well.